Good morning, everyone. You guys are all so quiet this morning. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in the heart of Las Cruces. Another beautiful morning to be together. I'm Sarah Benson. <laughs> okay, let's hold clap. <laughs> That's worth clapping about. This is my husband, Doug, and we're going to start us off with a couple of songs. I invite you to stand if that's comfortable for you. <laughs> I am a light, I am a light, I am a light in this world. I am a light, I am a light, I am a light in this world. And I shine, and I shine, and I shine so bright. And I shine, and I shine, and I shine so bright. You are a light, you are a light, you are a light in this world. You are a light, you are a light, you are a light in this world. And you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. And you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. We are alive, we are alive, we are a light in this world. We are alive, we are alive, we are a light in this world. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. Our thoughts are prayers, and we are all pray our thoughts are prayers listen to what you're saying seek a higher consciousness a state of peacefulness and know that God is always there and every thought becomes our prayer our thoughts are prayers, the tools that we create with. Our thoughts are prayers, that spirit resonates with. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of mindfulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes our prayer. And every thought becomes our prayer. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Deborah Taylor Russell, your board president. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in the Heart of Las Cruces, where our vision is a world in loving partnership for the good of all. Welcome to anyone visiting for the first time. Please help yourself to a packet of information. There's a gift certificate in there to our bookstore as well. Fill out the information front form with an email to get our email newsletter list. Be sure to read the newsletter. Welcome to those watching online. We started the accredited class with spiritual principles and practices last Thursday from 4 to 6 Thursday 
6.30, July 18th. It runs through August 15th. If you want to jump in, this is the last chance to do so. So let Reverend Bonnie know after the service. The class will be based upon the book, This Thing Called You by Ernest Holmes. Today we will have a potluck and a town hall meeting after the service. We will have an, an informational follow-up to the annual meeting with Reverend Bonnie's report and news from your new board. Our budget to approve. Please stick around. Looking ahead, we need you to save the dates September 7th for a metaphysical fair here. October 26th, a fall treasure sale, and November 16th will be our craft fair. So craft makers, start making your crafts. And now I get to have my little spiel here. My opportunity. Whether we like it or not, we live in a consumer-driven world that demands payment for all goods and services. We've all seen the high rate of inflation and corporate greed whittle away our wallets until many of us are ready to pack up and move to Canada. But then we remember, this is home. I don't want to move to another country and start all over, not at my age. This is where my friends and family are. This is where my heart beats. This is where my spiritual journey began. CSL is my spiritual home, and this home brings joy into my life. This spiritual community supports me, and I support it. Instead of supporting businesses like Starbucks and the like, I, Deborah Taylor Russell, as your new board president, am asking you to dig a bit deeper. Your new board has many exciting ideas to help propel this center into and through our next phase. What that will look like is up to you. I ask you, do you look forward to coming here? And Zoomers, do you enjoy being fed from your couch at home? I know I do. This center feeds me spiritually day in and day out. I'm really not sure what I would do without this loving presence in my life. I never thought I'd say it, but I have found my forever home. I now ask each of you to close your eyes and for just a moment, really give thanks for this place. What does the center mean to you? Hopefully more than a Frappuccino every Monday morning. Your new board needs you to step up and support us with your time, talent, and yes, unfortunately, your treasure. In order to move forward in spreading these teachings, I believe Judy Garland said it best with the clicking of her heels. Close your eyes, clicking our heels together, say it with me. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. We believe in the power of prayer, which we call spiritual mind treatment. Please fill out a prayer request that can be found in the pockets on the chair backs. There is a God can in the back where you can put your prayer request or drop it in the offering plate on the tables as you exit the sanctuary. Or you can still use our prayer request button on our website. Our prayer team made up of practitioners and ministers from the four local New Thought communities will pray with you in regard to your request. In addition, should you have something you would like a quick prayer treatment for after the service, the practitioners wearing stoles will be around the room to provide this service for you. And fill out a gratitude card for what you are grateful for. Now it is time for song, silence, and prayer. Take a breath, close your eyes, go within, deep inside. The gift is 
Be still and listen till only one voice can be heard. Be still and listen to the one voice, God's voice. In this moment, I feel the presence of God in and through me. I am one with this and allow myself to be in a place of peace and acceptance. Knowing that there is God everywhere there is no place God is not. Having the faith to know that love exists in this moment, only love, surrounded by love, love for myself, love for my fellow man, love for the perfection surrounding us despite the appearance of imperfection. I feel the power and presence move in and through me as I thank the universe that powers the energy behind spirit and release it into that energy flow. It is done, and so it is. And today's reading is from the Science of Mind, page 423. In conclusion, what the world needs is spiritual conviction, followed by spiritual experience. I would rather see a student of this science prove its principle than to have him repeat all the words of wisdom that have ever been uttered. It is far easier to teach the truth than it is to practice it. But the practice of truth is personal to each, and in the long run, no one can live our life for us. To each is given what he needs, and the gifts of heaven come alike to all. How we shall use these gifts is all that matters. To hold one's thoughts steadfastly to the constructive, to that which endures, and to the truth may not be easy in a rapidly changing world. But to the one who makes the attempt, much is guaranteed. The essence of spiritual mind healing and of all true religious philosophy is an inner realization of the presence of perfection within and around about. It is the hope of heaven, the voice of God proclaiming, I am that which thou art, thou art that which I am. And so it is. <laughs> we needed a whole different sheet of paper for and so it is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, 
This is a Karen Drucker song. It's called I Don't Have to Be Perfect. And uh, yeah, hope I can do it justice. <laughs> you all, once you get the, the chorus figured out, please sing along. <laughs> It started in third grade, the teacher said, let's sing and have some fun. So I let it rip, I let it wail. She said, Sarah, why don't you just hum? So for many years, I squished my voice, thinking I was wrong. Till then one day, I learned the truth. And now I sing this song that says, I don't have to be perfect. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> my self-permission to be just who I am. No, I don't have to be perfect. I'm doing the best I can. I give myself permission to be just who I am. So I'm standing in front of the mirror, obsessing about my belly fat. My hips, my thighs, wrinkles around my eyes. Who can live with judgment like that? <laughs> the media tells me daily I should be young, tall, tan, and thin. But the truth is when I accept myself, that's when I win, I sing. I don't have time to be perfect. I'm doing the best I can. I give myself permission to be just who I am. No, I don't have to be perfect. I'm doing the best I can. I give myself permission to be just who I am. Perfection's an illusion. I won't give my power away. I can lighten up and let it go and know that I'm Okay. <laughs> if I do the song again, Sergio is going to have to teach me a dance routine for this part. <laughs> now I'm older and wiser. I don't really care what people say. If folks think I'm not perfect, I just bless them on their way. Life's too short to be judgmental. Take a break, have a good time. And if you're struggling with this issue, then raise your voice with mine. Raise your voice with mine. I don't have to be perfect. I'm doing the best I can. I give myself permission to be just who I am. President who doesn't like to be up in front of people and did a fantastic job. Yay! Thank you, Deb. <laughs> she did good. I know her mom was smiling down on her this morning. <laughs> we we miss Patty, but we're grateful that Deb is stepping up and in. And, and Kira's here today. Also, we're so grateful to have her. So yay! It feels like all the family is back. Well, almost all of them, huh? <laughs> So as Deb read in our reading this morning, it is far easier to teach the truth than to practice it. I'm Reverend Bonnie, the community spiritual leader here at the center with the pronoun she and her. And as I teach this morning, I am well aware of the fact that I need to practice what I teach. So I'm listening to my own words as they came through. <laughs> <laughs> for this talk. So when you hear practice makes, what is the next word you usually? Perfect. perfect, yeah. And so I looked up, of course, the definition of perfect, and we've been looking at that this week. 
having all the required or desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics as good as it is possible to be. The second meaning is absolute complete, absolute or complete and complete. Third, to make something completely free from faults or defects or as close to such a condition as possible. Yeah. And this month's theme is practice makes imperfect. And so I, you know, I was like, huh, what do they want us to do with that one? I looked up the word imperfect and the definition I got was not perfect, defective or inadequate. And I certainly don't think that the people that came up with this topic wanted us to go around thinking that we were in deficit of something or inadequate. So as we look at this idea of perfection and what it is doing in our lives and how we relate to it, I don't think that the idea that we are imperfect is what we're trying to get across, but rather to expand our meaning of perfect to include some of those things that we might judge as imperfect. I think that's what we've been saying the last couple of weeks. For some reason, I'm really dry this morning, so excuse me as I keep trying to get my mouth to work. So my decision on how to approach this this week is I want to change my focus to what the practice is that we think is going to make us perfect, so to speak. What is, what is it we're practicing? What is it doing for us? When we practice something, what are we doing? What is the, <clears throat> excuse me, what is the purpose or the goal or the outcome of practice? So what happens when we practice something? What, what, when you practice, you get better at it. Mm -hmm. What else? More comfortable. Progress. And when we practice, what are we doing? Repetitive. We're doing it over and over and over again. We can use the word rehearsing. We're rehearsing it. We're thinking about it over and over. So we can rehearse or practice thoughts, as we had in the reading also, or we can practice an activity, and we do it over and over and over again. Thank you so much, Teresa. Is this your lid? Yes, but oh. it had a lid on it, so I just... Yeah. Hard. yeah. <clears throat> so as we practice something, what came to me is it becomes easier for us. It becomes memorized if it's a thought or, or, or something like a phrase. And so some of you probably already know that I folk dance, and I intend to do so even more once this knee is replaced with one that works. But in folk dancing, one of the things that they say is that when you can do the dance, so they're usually line dances, we're holding hands, you can do the dance and talk to your neighbor, and your feet are still doing what they want to, you know, are supposed to do. That's when you really know the dance. You've practiced it so much that your body does it and you can be doing something else, talking to somebody else. So whatever the desired activity is when we practice, it becomes easier, it's more doable. And I think practice also boosts our boldness. We were talking about that boldness before, our bravery. And I think about Simone Biles, the gymnast. Her practicing of gym, gymnastics has then allowed her to, to move into areas where nobody's ever done some of the moves that she does. Her boldness is showing up in these new mo moves. She's raised the bar for all other gymnasts. And we see that happening in other sports as well. The fastest runner then is broken by the next fastest runner. You know, So people increase their ability to do things when they practice. So... When we rehearse or practice what's going on in our head, we're going to have more of that. That's going to be the first thing that kind of pops into our mind. And I think that what our New Thought teachers were telling us is we need to be careful what we're practicing in our head. Is what we're practicing something that we choose to, and it supports us, or is it a, a negative thought? Is it something like, oh, there you go again, you're just, you know, are we beating up on ourselves with and practicing that, or are we practicing something positive? So when we call it a spiritual practice, what are we talking about then? What are we practicing? Again, Ernest Holmes, in this is the chapter called How to Use It, the very first sentence he says, 
One of the great difficulties in the new order of thought is that we are likely to indulge in too much theory and too little practice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so when we're doing that, when we're moving from theory into practice, what are we doing in order to help ourselves move from theory or just the thoughts into practice? What are some of the things that we consider spiritual practice? You can meditation, prayer, compassion, did I hear that? What else? Affirmations. Journaling. I was hoping we'd hear about that. <laughs> we, service, yes. So there's all these things, our contemplation, the awareness of our thoughts, opening to that divine, expressing in and through us more fully. All of these things we consider spiritual practices. And as usually happens, I was scrolling through Facebook this morning, and I found something that fit perfectly here. And it was titled, How to Instantly Feel Better. <laughs> So to me, this is, again, the purpose of practice, is to help ourselves feel better and pick those things that we want to practice. So it said, if you're angry, sing. If you're burnt out, take a walk. If you're overthinking, write. If you're anxious, breathe. If you're stressed, exercise. If you're sad, gratitude. If you're feeling lazy, a cold shower. <laughs> If you're impatient, reflect on progress. And when I read that list, singing, walking, writing, breathing, exercise, gratitude, the cold shower, that's a new one, and reflecting on progress, to me, that's part of our spiritual practice. Those are all those things. So when we practice, that's when we can move into those quicker when we're feeling all those other things that were listed. The New Thought Thinkers also talked about doing these things on a daily basis. They write about daily meditation, daily contemplating on some idea that we want to see and experience in the world, daily focusing on something or daily saying something. So I grabbed some examples from Ernest Holmes. He said, to daily meditate on the perfect life, and those are capitalized perfect and life. To daily embody the great ideal, which again was capitalized, is a royal road to freedom, to that peace which passeth understanding, and is happiness to the soul. And further on, he says, let us daily say to ourselves, perfect God within me, perfect life within me, which is God, come forth into expression through me as that which I am. Lead me ever into the paths of perfection and cause me to see only the good. By this practice, the soul will become illumined and will acquaint itself with God and be at peace. So there it is in a variety of ways. Further on in the book, I cheated and just wrote them down. Page 358. So we daily practice in our meditations the realization of life, infinite indwelling spirit within me. And even further on, on 419, it is a truth and should become a part of our everyday practice. That is, we should daily practice correct thinking. So there's a variety of different ways and ideas of what we can do on a daily basis. And just as no two people express and look the same or behave the same or think the same, so there are no two daily practices that look the same or identical. It's up to you to figure out how you're going to take that time on a daily basis and when during the day you take that time and then to do it. Now, I say that sounding like it's real easy, and I've shared with you before that for me to get a daily practice going took years, <laughs> years of practice, years of thinking about it, years of saying, well, I should have a daily practice, but it wasn't happening. And part of the block for me was feeling like I didn't deserve to take an hour to myself every morning. But what I started to learn is when I did that, the people around me appreciated being around me a lot more. <laughs> My son would sometimes say, mom, did you meditate this morning? <laughs> They would know when I hadn't done my daily practice. So what I started to see is that it wasn't just for me. 
that I needed to take this time, but it was to also enhance my experience and interactions out in the world. So the results then of a spiritual practice are not necessarily that everything falls into being perfect and nothing disturbs us in our life, but that it becomes easier for us to respond to whatever does show up in our life. If we've rehearsed those responses on a daily basis, it helps us then to move into prayer when we need to, to stay balanced and remember to breathe if there's something that's disturbing our peace, and to reveal that deeper truth of who we are, who our being is. And we talk about healing is revealing so the healing can take place if I practice on a daily basis, allowing myself to, to step more fully into my truth so that truth can be revealed. So I'm saying practice makes easier. It makes it easier to remember who we are amid the rough times. It makes it easier to choose how I want to be. I remember because I'm practicing on a daily basis to focus on who I really am and it becomes second nature. And when I wrote that, I laughed at myself because I thought, huh, as we practice, it becomes second nature to be our true nature, to let our true nature out. Now, <clears throat> at the beginning of the month, I did a Q&A Sunday, and one of the people sent this question in, which I already addressed. It said, how do we learn to forgive ourselves and move forward? And then it said, asking for a friend, laugh out loud. <laughs> And I shared then that when I experienced an event that felt unforgivable to me, that I had done, the only thing that I could do to move through that, because I was so upset with myself, was start that mantra of, I love myself, I love myself, I love myself. And that mantra started out being said in a state of disbelief. You know, I didn't necessarily believe that. But as I kept saying it, I was moving closer to belief. And eventually, loving myself became a louder message than the condemnation that I was giving myself prior to that. And that's what, again, rehearsing or practice can do for us. My aunt and I were joking here recently as we were talking about my coming up surgery. And she said a quote that my grandmother always said is, don't rehearse error. Now, she was a Christian scientist, but that meant don't play out all the bad things that could possibly happen. Don't rehearse the negative. Don't rehearse error. We want to rehearse truth. We want to focus on truth. And again, when we practice rehearsing truth, it makes it easier to love ourselves and to love others. So you can take that phrase with you if you like. Don't rehearse error. Remember, <laughs> we want to rehearse truth. The last week, Kamatara talked to us, and she did a great job, so I want to just honor her one more time. And yes, I do try and get her down here more often, but she's quite busy. <laughs> but she talked about perfectionism as being the problem, you know, because there's a lot of times that Holmes talks about us being perfect, like in that last reading that I did. But he's not talking about perfectionism, that state of being when we believe that anything less than being perfect is unacceptable. And, and that state of being that kind of moves us into thinking that we're not good enough. So as I thought about perfectionism and how it relates to this idea of practice makes something, I thought about how in that state of perfectionism, at least for me, it means that I have to be right. Because if I'm perfect and I'm holding that standard of acting perfect and being perfect, then that means I'm right. I wouldn't be perfect and being wrong. So it took me back to a statement that I learned years ago in the 12-step program, Codependence Anonymous. Would you rather be right or happy? <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, you know, I think I've shared before, I always thought in order to be happy, I had to be right. That's what made me happy. <laughs> but I learned over the years as I contemplated that sentence, huh, I can separate that out. I can allow myself to be happy, and I don't have to have the discussion or the argument with you and prove my rightness. So now I'm also thinking I could say, would you rather be perfect or happy? 
as you move through life and you try new things and you do different things and you open yourself to a greater expression, can you release perfectionism and accept in happiness, being happy with whatever is expressing through you? Just some food for thought. So when we think about practice, another thing that Ernest Holmes talked about practicing is the presence of God. Practice the presence of God. And that one I needed to read through and think about a lot more. This is on page 413. To practice the presence of God is to awaken within us the Christ consciousness. Christ is God in the soul of everyone. The resurrection is the death of the belief that we are separated from God. For death is to the illusion alone and not to reality. God did not die. What happened was that we awoke to life. The awakening must be on the part of us humans since God already is life. So to practice the presence of God is to awaken to that Christ consciousness within us. What does that mean? How can we take that into our practice and contemplate what that might look like? The Christ consciousness within us. Awakening to it. Waking up to the truth within us. So part of our spiritual practice is to help us wake up, to awaken to the God within. And so I looked up awake. I should know what that means, but I wanted to see the dictionary version again. Fully conscious, alert, and awake. To awaken is to be fully conscious, alert, and awake. And then spiritual awakening came up for me. Awakening to God's truth or purpose for our lives. Coming back to yourself. Awareness of new reality of who you truly are. And being true for you, knowing that that is also true for others. So part of our spiritual practice help us, helps us to awaken to that Christ consciousness within us and recognize that it's within others. So I was like, okay, then our spiritual practice is like coffee. It makes it easier to wake up, <laughs> at least for me. <laughs> but that was a visual. Okay, I'm going to take this in first thing in the morning, this awareness to help myself awaken, wake up to what's really out there. And when we're awake, we can make better decisions. We can see more clearly. We can gain clarity, and we can step into that divine guidance that many of us pray for. I know because I see the prayer requests, many people want divine guidance in their life, and that comes from awakening to the Christ consciousness within yourself. So take a moment to just reflect then on what is your spiritual practice. What does it look like? And it can look very different than what you might think it's supposed to look like. But we all do something on a routine basis. And whatever it is that's enhancing your life and making your life, e like life easier, what is that? What is that spiritual practice that you do? And how does it make your life easier? And as you're sitting here listening to this, are there any ideas about what might want to be added to this practice? And how would that bring even more ease into your life? Again, food for thought. So I want to share with you that lately on our minister's listserv, there's been a flurry of discussion about how it is that we might bring our spiritual practices to the forefront and apply them to the life events that are going on in the world around us right now. And this has been true. I interact with not just ministers within our teaching, but ministers in other teachings as well. And I have a friend that I've made online who's an Episcopal minister, and we share a lot of ideas back and forth, and it's really kind of fun to get a different perspective totally outside of new thought, and then she gets mine, and she actually sometimes listens to these talks, and I listen to hers, so it's kind of fun. Anyway, she's, she sent me the 900-page Project 2025, and I don't know if you've heard about that or not. But that is something that is on a lot of ministers' minds, whether it's new thought ministers or others. Because what's being proposed in that is that our country become a Christian country, but under the nationalistic definition of Christian, their definition, which doesn't necessarily include many of us. 
So I wanted to let you know that I have a copy of that in my email. If you'd like to read it, <laughs> I can send it to you. Because part of what I think is important in our spiritual practice is informing ourselves, becoming aware. And you can look through that and decide, does that line up with your spiritual practice? Does that line up with your spiritual beliefs? Does that line up with creating a world that works for everyone? And you can make that decision. The other thing, of course, that's on everybody's mind is the upcoming election. And so part of spiritual practice is contemplating what's going on in the world around us and moving that into prayer. Michael Beckwith said in a talk that I got to see him give once that he gets up every morning, gets his coffee, gets out the paper, and reads the paper to find out what he's going to put on his prayer request list for the day. And he takes from that everything that he brings into prayer in the morning. That's part of his spiritual practice. I know some people are like, I can't even deal with that first thing in the morning. I'll do that later in the day or whatever. However it works for you, the idea is that we inform ourselves and then take whatever we would like to see enhanced or changed into our treatment process, into the prayer work that we do. And then as we say, you treat and move your feet, so you do the prayer work, and then you take whatever action you feel divinely guided to do that will support the world that you would like to see in the world. As a minister, and in respect for our nation's decision to separate church and state, I can't and won't tell you how to vote. And I won't really talk about it a lot. Beth said yesterday, I don't want to hear anything political from the platform. I said, oh, dear, <laughs> wait till you hear what I have to say tomorrow. <laughs> Because I already knew what I was going to say. So I'm not trying to convince you one way or the other. What I want you to do is take these issues into your spiritual practice and see how they line up and what would line up and how it is then you can move in the world, cast your vote in whatever way supports what you see is in alignment with spirit and the ideologies that we teach or that you abide by. What is most in alignment with your principles which people or persons embody those for you? And do you want leading our country and our communities here locally as well? And so take t time to create in your spiritual practice time for looking at that and praying about that and supporting that process in your prayer work. The Minister's Listserv also sent out an email, and this was from Reverend uh, David Alexander, and the title, you know, they put a subject line in the emails, is Spiritual Practice for the Election. <laughs> so beginning July 28th and continuing for 100 days, which would take us to November 4th, we are cultivating a special mindfulness practice to raise the vibration for the 2024 U.S. presidential election. The airwaves are filled with fear, noise, and anxiety closing in from all sides. What is important is to be an informed voter. It is also critical to pay mindful attention to the vibration and frequency of our consciousness, knowing that the quality and tenor of our thinking directly impacts the quality of our experience. With that in mind, we seek to intentionally cultivate a high vibration, mindfully grounded spiritual practice for 100 days. And so what you can do if you're interested, I have this paper, you can take a picture of it, there's a phone number, you can text JOIN to that phone number and you will get daily voice messages that are pre-recorded starting July 28th that are to be uplifting and positive in regard to this. And also there's an e um, a link to a website if you want more information. They're also seeking people who want to help be the voices of those messages, that want to put out a positive thought. And so there's a way to contact them if you want to be one of the recorded voices on the message that's being sent out. So what we can do, they've got even a sheet here, my election intention, 100 days of mindful practice. July 28th through November 4th, daily mindful messages from thought leaders, weekly Zoom community check-ins, intentional community building, and based on the proven somatic healing practices. They're basing this on a book, What It Takes to Heal, How Transforming Ourselves Can Change the World. So if you're interested, you can take a picture of that after the service. 
My point is that we can not only do spiritual practice alone, but we can join in spiritual practice with other people. We can find ways that we, we develop our own, own, excuse me, our own peace of mind. And part of the practice is to raise that vibration for ourselves and out there in the race consciousness, in the mind of the great one, the one mind. We take our light into the darkness in different ways. And so how we feel called to do that is going to be individual to each person. You can help yourself and others move out of fear, anger, trepidation, or even what I also sometimes see, lethargy or the sense of giving up, which to me indicates almost depression. We can move out of that with our spiritual practice. And we can move out of that as we join with others in spiritual practice. As we practice love, as we practice what I like to think of as open listening, being open to differences of opinions. And I said, being open to or practicing love. Again, we can't practice love too much. Being open to and practicing peace, affirming affirmations. So again, what is your spiritual practice? How can it enhance your life or make your life easier? And how is it awakening you? It's awakening all of us. Ernest Holmes, again, on Science of Mind said, only as we gradually, definitely, and intelligently take true ideas and build them into the structure of our own thought. That's an interesting concept. We're taking these ideas, building them into the structure of our own thought. Only then can there come become the desired reaction. That's how we get the manifestation that we want to see. And as we practice awakening the Christ consciousness within ourselves, this is what he says about that. The Christ is always triumphant, is ever a victor, is never defeated, and needs no champion. Wow. So as I reminded myself of that, I could go... Just let it unfold. I'm going to move into that higher vibration, do my spiritual practice, and let it unfold. So my encouragement is to practice, practice, practice. Repeat and rehearse what you want to remember, the thoughts that you want in the structure of your thinking, how it is that you want to speak then in the wor world and what it is that you want to do in the world. Contemplate. Meditate, affirm and make affirmations. I'm pointing at Edie because she's the, the queen of affirmations. So if you need help, ask her. She can help you. <laughs> Journaling, mind your mind. Be mindful. What are you rehearsing? And let's make it be something we want to see in the world. Pray, do treatment, and move your divinely guided feet. Take classes. And if you're finding it difficult, work with a practitioner. That's what the practitioners are here for. That's what they love to do with you is put these ideas out there and figure out what is the best way you can move forward to get the ease that you would like to see in your life. Whatever your method is, practice, practice, practice. Because practice may not make perfect, but it does make life easier. And so it is. So we normally only ask those that have the stoles, the licensed practitioners, to stand. But today I'm going to do something a little different. We have them around the room. But if any of you would like to join in encircling this room with your energy as we do this prayer, please feel free to stand and surround this room because we all are practitioners with small peas. We are all here to bring our energy and love into the world. And those that remain seated, you're going to take it all in because they're sending it your way. <coughs> yeah, just take it in. So let the prayer come from your heart, your mind, in whatever way. And, and if my words don't fit, re-say them in your own way. So we recognize the one spirit, the one life, the one love, the one mind. And everyone standing in this room, sitting in this room, hearing the words of my voice, watching on Zoom, watching on YouTube, we are all God expressing. We are all love expressing. And so we all step more fully into our spiritual practice. 
We commit to doing a practice that uplifts us, makes our lives easier, and thus the lives of those around us. We commit to doing a spiritual practice that is in the best interest of all those concerned in our country and in the world. We allow love to flow in and through us. We allow our hearts and minds to be open as we listen to those that might have different opinions from us. We allow ourselves to hold in love and compassion all people in this country and in the world. We are grateful for this teaching, for how it enhances our spiritual practice, how it brings our hearts and minds into alignment with a greater truth, and how we exemplify that in the world. So in gratitude, I release these words knowing that it's already so in the mind of God, the perfect world a world full of peace and love and harmony. And so we just do our part to make it manifest as we release these words together and say, and so it is. Thank you all. And I'm sure we have a song. I was listening to one of my playlists this week, and this line popped out uh, of one of the songs. It's uh, The Power of Now by Faith Rivera, and the line is, the power of now is always perfect, nothing to be but who you are. So I've been thinking about presence and um, the power of acceptance of you know, right, right here, right now, and how powerful that is. So the power of now, uh, Faith Rivera. Strong enough to 
Perfect, <laughs> perfect way to just ground what I had to say earlier. Thank you so much. And so now it is time for us to consider giving back to the center as our president let us know. Uh, and you'll hear more about um, this at the town hall meeting. So please stay because one of the things we did not do at the annual meeting that was supposed to be done was present a budget for the next year. We will be presenting that at the town hall meeting and asking for your support in approving that or not. So <laughs> let us know. But that's something we're bringing forward that was supposed to take place at the annual meeting. And part of what you will see in that is that we need to step up a little more here with what we're bringing into the center. We're doing that through events that are ramping up, as you heard, save the date for three really important events coming up. But that also means each of us needs to consider where we're putting our money and what we want to support. And so we hope that you're supporting the center through your tithes and offerings. And then we, in turn, let 10% of what comes in go out to support other people and organizations in our community. This month, 10% of that is going to Messiah Valley Community of Hope. And <clears throat> their mission is to, to promote dignity and empowerment among the homeless population by providing shelter services, case management, income support, and permanent housing programs in Las Cruces and Doñana County. And so just know that anything that comes in, 10%, we continue to allow to flow through us and go out and do good work in the community. So let's say together our blessing. Really take in these words. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, in me. And can two people pass the plates for us as we sing our song? so blessed I am so for stepping up and remember you just can throw your blessings in there your prosperity consciousness is what we need no matter what goes into the plate so we're grateful for all that comes through the center that supports us and all that we do the na meetings the tops groups the acim all of these things that take place here are so important to our community we're grateful that all that comes in supports what happens here and goes out to support our greater community Thank you, God, in all of us. And so it is. Thank you. And what are we closing with? Uh, let there be peace. Okay. You know what? Before we do that, we have a few minutes. I wanted us to do the benediction one more time. Because what are we affirming but life in us? So just repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. 
Life is in my affairs. I receive it. I share it. I am it. And I accept it just the way that it is and just the way that it is not. Thank you, life. Thank you, Lyle. And so it is. <laughs> Let's stand and sing the peace song. If you want to surround your room, you can, or we can stay in place, whatever you prefer. to join us to eat and stick around for our town hall meeting. Thank you. Have a wonderful week.